Sorry about that. Hi! <clears throat> Hello once again. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another glorious Hump Day Wednesday. September 21st, 2022. And today is episode 849, I believe. Yeah, 849, part 1. Today we're going to be learning about promised in writing. We're going to be promised in writing. Beginning with Romans 8.32 and um, compiled from John D. Morse. So if you're excited about another glorious hump day Wednesday, smash that like button. Comment something about Wednesdays. That a lot of people refer to Wednesdays. Um, that I may not that I might not know about Wednesdays. What's a tradition that some people do on Wednesdays that I've never heard of? Let me know. That'd be a good one. But subscribe if you're new. Turn on notifications. Share the video and channel with your family and friends. Help me reach that 25 to 30 subscriber mark. And thank you to the to the last subscriber. I'm up to 16 now, so that's doing good. The numbers are going up, so. <laughs> but. I'll get me to that 25 to 30 subscriber mark by October the 1st, and I will greatly appreciate each and every one that helps me get there. Sorry about that one. My hair is a little, little bit of a mess, and. That's about this long up got up out of sleeping so but um but without further ado let's get promised in writing or let's let's be promised in writing in Romans 8 32 which we a lot of us have heard passages from Romans for Romans 8 is a good sermon passage and I've heard, I've heard passages from Romans 8 for as long as I can remember. Or, I've, I've heard them over and over and over. So. It, but it's a good passage. If you ever want a good read, read chapter 8 of Romans. Especially, um, what is it? 20? I think it's 31 through 39 is the main pool of Romans 8. So, but the whole chapter is good, but those those are the main the main what you want to want to learn about. So but 832 says he that spurred spared sorry not his own son but delivered him up for us all how shall he not with him also freely give us all things. So for those of us who have trusted God for salvation based on the finished work of Christ on the cross, God has already done for us the most difficult and costly thing he could ever do. He graciously sent his only son to earth and then to the cross and the grave in order to make forgiveness and eternal fellowship with us possible. So we are now adopted children into his family, joint heirs with his beloved son, Jesus Christ. Romans 8, 16 and 17, 29, etc. There's other verses. From whom we will never be separated. Verses 35 through 39. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Verse 15. So consider our state when all this was being done for us. It is easy to love a beautiful baby who needs someone to care for it, but we are not all but we were not at all attractive. We were filthy sinners born in sin and habitually choosing to offend God's holy nature by succumbing to the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we're by nature children of wrath, Ephesians 2, 3. 
furthermore, we even we were even enemies of the cross at the time. We were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Romans 5 verse 10. Outside of his eyes of love and grace, we would have appeared more like a repulsive maggot than a beautiful baby. Wow. And that's saying a lot. So it stands to reason that he who has already done the most difficult, yea, infinitely difficult thing for us out of his great love will continue to, to manifest that love to us. Amen? Especially now that we are of his family. As our beginning passage tell, beginning verse tells us, he will freely give us all things. So with our best interest at heart, he will see that all things work together for our good. Romans 8, 28. So what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Romans 8, 31. So most of that passage was talking, was right out of Romans 8. So you had Romans, you had Ephesians 2 and Romans 5, chapter 5. But all the rest of it was Romans 8. So it's going to be pretty easy to put the verses in my tags when I edit this one a little later. So, before I get it put up for 7 o'clock. So. Oh, okay, so that's all I have for today. Coming up tomorrow in your Blessed Thankful Thursday, September 22nd, 2022, in episode 850. Part 1, we're going to be learning about things to be aware. There's going to be things to be aware of. Put it more, more bluntly. Beginning with Matthew 7.15, compiled from Henry M. Morse. Seems like we jump from, we'll have one from John, John Morse, and then we jump back to Henry. It's like, we'll have a bunch of them by Henry. And then we'll jump over to John, then back to Henry again. <laughs> right. And then we'll have the other ones pop in there every now and then. So, But stay tuned for that. I'll get to that in just a few minutes, but you'll see that one tomorrow. So with that said, I love you. I appreciate you. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Keep on keeping on and trusting God, and he'll keep you safe. And all you say and do in 2022 and beyond. And until later, peace out, everybody. So long, farewell, God bless everyone, have a great rest of your hump day Wednesday morning, come back after one, and we will talk about part two of today's episode, 8, 849, part one, and we're going to be learning about living water from Patricia Rayburn, derived from John 7, 30, 37 through 39. So stay tuned for that. I'll get to that in just a few minutes, but you'll see that after one. So with that said, God bless everyone, and I'll see you later. <laughs> Goodbye.